Hey, it's Paul in Perth here again. Today we're going to cover off uh, a, a relatively complex one, but one that does happen all the time. It's that situation where you lost your last key and you're faced with, with a choice of two. One is you ring a locksmith and you pay a fair amount of money to get them to key you a new key, or you look at buying some parts from a wrecker and putting in a whole new lock set. So I'm gonna show you how to do that physically, and then I'm gonna show you in the software how to change it in the software so that the transponder um, key code ends up in your body control module. So the work we're gonna be doing, this is a BL Master 3 I'm in now, the work we're gonna be doing is all here. Now, you don't actually have to remove the steering wheel to do this, I'm just doing it for the purposes of making the video easy to see. So I'm removing the airbag, I'm removing the steering wheel, I'm removing the uh, covers, top and bottom, which you will need to do, by the way, so you definitely do need to do this, this particular part. And I'm gonna remove the uh, clock spring and um, the, the, the stalk uh, housing. So as you can see here, this is the, um, so we've got the, the key, the key barrel, the key barrel housing and the ignition switch. And just to show you, at the moment, the car does start, okay? But as I said, what we're gonna assume is we're gonna assume I don't have a key, okay? Now, uh, you would have seen in my last video, I showed you how you can actually remove the barrel out of there, out of the barrel out of the barrel housing. But to do that, you needed to put the key in the, in the accessory position. Now, in this video, we don't have a key. So I'm gonna throw this in the back now, and we're never gonna go back to it, which means I've got no way of getting that barrel out of the barrel housing. In the previous video, I showed you how to get off these um, uh, security uh, lock nuts, these security bolts. So once I've removed those, we will find that I can remove, so there's one there, there's one on the other side. Before the video, I'd already removed the one on the other side. And I'm gonna remove the um, uh, the ignition, oh, I bloody broke it. Oh well, the ignition switch um, connector unfortunate that I broke that but we'll see how see how that goes rightio and I'll have to disconnect the uh, transponder connector and then I can remove the whole housing okay so there's my housing there so I've got the key barrel uh, key barrel housing ignition switch all right so we're gonna, at this point this is scrap metal because we don't have a key that fits it so what you'd need to do is you'd need to go to a wrecker and you would need to buy that. So you would need to buy two keys with the matching barrel, with the matching driver's door lock, because of course you want the door lock to match the ignition, okay? So, oh sorry, and you would also need a new housing, okay? So if you if you go to the, the a wrecker and you buy those things, you can you can achieve some interesting results and I'd like to show you that now. So let's, get this uh firstly physically into the into the uh steering column so line that up uh, which is not line. there we go that's lined up i'll just put one screw in just for the purposes of this video um you would obviously put two in and you do them up tight okay i'm certainly going to need the ignition switch to be um electrically connected so I'll plug that in get the screwdriver in just pop that up hold on uh, okay so we'll plug in our ignition Okay, there we go. Okay, I think it's because I broke it earlier. That's certainly sitting on. And you'll need to plug in the um, in the transponder ring. So now you're physically connected and now you'll need to put your barrel in. So if you remember, to put your barrel in, you can see the accessory mark there. I need to line up the key on the accessory mark. And then when I do that, I'll find that the key 
and barrel will slide in. So now I've got a barrel in a barrel housing. Now, when I turn this, the car is not gonna start. It's gonna, physically the key is gonna turn, but it's not gonna start. And let's let's talk about the anatomy of a key for a second, because we've got three different, three different technologies here. You've got a mechanical butt blade, then you've got a, um, a near field transponder, and if like me, you've got the um, remote um, opening and closing, you've got that there. So this is mechanical, this is near field, and this is infrared. So what's happening when I put the key in is I'm mechanically able to turn it, but I'm not getting the transponder code from the transponder being recognized by the body control module. So let me just show you what a transponder actually is because it's a lot smaller and more interesting than you might think. These are two shells out of two keys that I've taken apart. And if you look here, this shell is empty here. I bought, it, I bought a shell without a transponder. This one on the right is one that I've taken out of a working key and you can see that there is a chip in there. Maybe if I do that, it'll make it more obvious for you. Okay, so that is without a transponder key, a transponder chip. That is with a transponder chip. So all it is, is this tiny little um, e electronic device that has a code in it. The code is picked up by the transponder ring. That's the transponder ring there. Or that's what they look like when they're, when they're disconnected. So when you put the key in, so the transponder ring is sitting like that. When you put your key in, the transponder chip is lining up with the transponder ring and that's how it reads, okay? Now what's happening now is because I'm using a key with a transponder that the body control module has never seen before, it mechanically turns because the key fits the barrel, but it won't start because the body control module has never heard of the code that it's getting from this um, transponder chip. So I'm gonna show you how to remedy that. Now, you would remember back a video I did, if you look way back in my back catalog, you'll find one I did about setting up cruise control on a BL Master 3. And in that, I used a, uh, a product called Forescan, and I used this OBD Link EX um, cable. So using those two, I'm gonna show you some of the, an extra feature within Forescan. So I'm just gonna chuck in my pin, don't look. All right. Now, I've opened up, so I've got Forescan open. So if you just come in and have a look at the screen, I've got Forescan open. The first thing I need to do is connect to the car. So I'm gonna click on the car, and down here, I'm gonna click on connect. So I click on connect, and I'm gonna optimize the, 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 um, the thing. Uh, that is the top car, the one with the white sedan rear smash. That is the car that I'm in. And pretty soon I'll be, it'll say everything's connected and happy. Well, it's connected and happy, it's got a ton of error codes. That's because the car's got half its stuff missing. But anyway, so it's still reading. As you can see down the bottom, there's new lines coming up. And eventually where it says reading vehicle info, I think it goes to ready or something like that when it's all done. All right, ready. Okay, so now so now that's done. All right, so we've now um, we've now connected that to the vehicle. You can see down here it says ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the spanner icon. We're going to go to service procedures, and we're going to go to Pat's programming. Once we're in Pat's programming, I'm going to press the play button. And it says, it gives me a warning about saying this is either, this is adding keys and blah, blah, blah. And you'll notice that the second option there is arrays and program keys. So that's the option that we're going to use today, arrays and program keys. I've got the key in the on position, in the ignition, and I click OK. And it says coded access requires an exchange of information between the vehicle's PAT system and a central database. The database will return an in code, which will allow security access to the PATs. Continue. You're going to say yes. And you're going to notice, uh, oh, hold on, let's stop. So it requires receiving that. Forescan can generate the code for you. Would you like to do it now? Well, of course you want Forescan to do it for you. So click yes. Now you'll notice there's a progress bar down the bottom and it's quite a long progress bar and it's currently at 2%. So um, 
to save you the grief, what I'm going to do is in the video, I'm going to jump ahead to when it's at 100%. Okay, so you'll notice it actually only went to 9%, so I've actually remembered this incorrectly. Um, so it's saying the following procedure is going to erase all known keys. It's important to have two keys available. Now, I should have mentioned that. When you go to the wrecker, don't just get a barrel with one key. You have to have a barrel with two keys. If you get sold one with one key, take it to a locksmith and get a second key made that's mechanically the correct, the blade is the right shape. And it, as long as it has a transponder in it, you'll be fine. One other thing I should have pointed out uh, earlier in the video is notice here when it was interrogating the body control module, it says number of keys stored is zero. Uh, sorry, is two. It's about to erase them, so it'll go to number of keys stored is, is zero. And it's asking me, do I have two PATS keys available? And you'd remember, I do have two keys available, so I do satisfy that condition. So I say yes. And the progress bar's progressing quite a bit faster now. Now, you must it must program a minimum of two keys. The key programming procedure, please turn the ignition off, wait 10 seconds, cycle key one in the ignition from off to run for at least six seconds, and then within five seconds after the key's removal, cycle key two in the ignition from off to run for at least six seconds, and repeat the last step if there's a third or fourth key to be programmed, and then, it, then two keys will have been programmed. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to turn off the ignition. We're going to wait 10 seconds. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. I'm now going to cycle key one into the run position. And you'll notice the car hasn't started, but I'm going to hold it there for at least six seconds. So 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Now, within five seconds of the key's removal, I need to put the second one in, also put it into the run position, and you'll notice that one actually has started it, but 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, and what I should find is that the other key will now also start the car, okay? And the keys are now programmed, which is exactly what it says on the, on the screen, and it goes to 100%. So, that's how you do it. So you needed to go to a wrecker and get this whole unit. You needed two keys. And if you want to do it properly, you'll also need the, door, the um, driver's door key as well, just so it's all keyed to the same key. I'm not going to do this today. I'm sweating like, like, like a dog. It's a hot day here in Perth, as it often is. Um, but if you're able to do that, you're probably going to be able to do that. Now, I've done something for free to you, for you today. I've provided something really helpful. And I need you to do something for me for free. I need you to click like and subscribe because the only way I can get up in the YouTube algorithm is with likes and subscribes. I've done all of this for free and I believe I have helped you. I need you to help me. Please just smash that like and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. Leave some comments below. See ya.